I'm Laura Vinroot Poole. For 20 years, I've owned Capital, an internationally recognized specialty store. Capital has never really been about fashion. It's always been about people. What We Wore was created to share the meaningful journeys that inspire me. From the designers and friends I meet on the road to the men and women with whom I work each day. Everybody wants to know her. I was so happy to have my dear friend Irene Neuwirth back on the podcast during quarantine. We share a space together in Brentwood, and I've missed being with her over the past two months. I loved the chance to connect with her about how she's exercising her creativity and embracing her team during this time. Irene, I'm happy to be talking to you, but I'm sad that I'm not with you. I know, I agree. I'm so happy to hear your voice. I hate to ask the first question, but how are you doing? And one of the things that I actually have started to do when I check in on my friends and my coworkers, my team, I don't say, how are you? I say, how are you at this moment today? (laughs) I'm good. There have definitely been moments where I have not felt great. Um, Yesterday being one of those. You seem to never know what you're going to get when you wake up. But this morning I woke up, I went for a really long walk in the morning and went for a swim. And that was the greatest thing in the entire world. (laughs) I like forced myself out because yesterday I didn't get out of pajamas for a long time, which we all know is a mistake. It's a major mistake. Major. And one of the things that's kind of weird is, you know, we're starting to think about opening. And one of the things I really didn't expect was like, just because I've been a recluse and sort of an like agoraphobic basically for two months is I'm not afraid of the virus. I'm actually just afraid of leaving my house a little bit. I know, you know? I feel that way too. It's so weird. No, I know. I'm really right there with you. And Phil is definitely right there with you. <laughs> He's not interested in leaving the house and maybe ever again. <laughs> And even when I told you, when I said I was coming out, hopefully coming out to LA in June, I said, oh, I'll come see you in June. And I was, even when I said it, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm ever invited. I mean, who knows what it'll be like if you'll even want me to come visit. Oh my God, that's so sad. Are you going to try to, I mean, there's no way you're coming out here in June. Oh, I think I will. Yeah. I mean, really, I think we're opening here. And and that's one of the things I've talked to the my team about a little is certainly safety protocol. You have to have all of the best practices of Lysol and, you know, offering masks and gloves if people want them and not and, you know, touchless checkout and all that stuff. But I, I think one of the bigger things is people are going to be afraid like to see people. <laughs> I find myself like I don't want to, you know, like, The other day I went for a walk with someone and by accident she was opening a gate and I like touched her back and I was like, (gasps) had nightmares about it last, you know, like for two nights after that, I was like, this is insane. We we have a store together and you also have another store in LA. What do you miss the most about the stores? I miss everything about the stores, people and the clients coming in and seeing beautiful things and flowers and clothes and jewelry and But I do think it's going to take us all a minute to kind of retrain ourselves on what that means, I guess, or how to navigate that. I mean, I really think that once there is some sort of some sort of treatment that makes this a little less scary, that maybe we won't feel, you know, I I have a feeling it'll feel very weird in the beginning and it'll quickly get normal. Like I actually found myself getting very concerned about like feeling a little more lenient. And then I read the news and I'm like, no, but it's not lenient at all right now. You know, and that's like the scary, that feels scary. We had an interesting thing happen last week. We had a client who came in that needed a dress fitted and altered for an event. So we, you know, did all the things we needed to do to prepare for that. Had one person in the store, two of us were there. And she came in and when she came to the door, she had mask and gloves on and we, we didn't have them on, but we had them available. And, you know, she came to the door and we said, would you like us to wear mask and gloves also? And she was like, oh my God, forget it. No. And we, everybody took them off and she was just like, I'm over this. I can't even do it anymore. Exactly. And it was like normal feeling. Yeah. T- I wasn't nervous at all. It wasn't, yeah, it was not weird at all. I think the the bigger thing is just, it's almost like that social intelligence in navigating not making clients feel uncomfortable. 
and not, you know, and, and, and I think, and everybody's going to have a different way of feeling, you know, so you just, I think have to really listen and feel it out and ask them what they're comfortable with and play it by ear, I guess. Yeah, I think that's so true. I mean, it's crazy what's happened with our economy. I mean, the whole thing is just like you never in your wildest dreams ever <laughs> thought that something like this would happen. And you know my wildest dreams. My dreams are <laughs> They're pretty wild. They're pretty wild. So, you know, like think about it. We were just in Palm Springs together. Yeah. Dancing it up, having a fun time, not thinking of anything like, you know, smashed in a restaurant slash bar or whatever that place was. Yes. You know, and it's just so crazy. Like now I find myself watching television and I'm like, oh my God, those people are so close to each other. I know. I do the same thing. That's it's that one weird? of the weirdest. It's so weird. It's one of the funniest parts. I know. <laughs> It's really crazy. Speaking of, thank you so much for forcing me to watch Unorthodox. That was so good. What are some others that you've loved? Um, to be honest, we haven't been watching very much TV, which it seems so not par for the course with what everyone else is doing. But we watch, oh, we're rewatching The Wire. Oh, that's so good. Right? That's I mean, a good, really good plan. Yeah. So, you know, I've never seen it. Well, you know what's so funny is every, almost every show we watch, I'll, I'll be Perry will say, "Who is that guy? I know that guy." I'll be like, "Oh, he was on the wire." <laughs> no, she was on the wire. It's the very best show on the in the history of the world. I mean, Phil is so excited. Last night <laughs> I just fell asleep because I just had kind of a rough day, and he kept like putting his hand in front of my face to see if I was awake, alive. <laughs> I'm alive, and I'm not awake, and I want to be asleep. So we're watching that. I was actually contemplating rewatching the, all of the Sopranos. Nice. And then did you ever watch the Japanese English one, Giri Haji, that I told you about? No, I need to watch that too. Was that fabulous? Super good. And Fauda? Did you watch I Fauda? Love, I didn't watch the new season. I was having a hard time getting into it, but I definitely have watched all the others. One more. Uh, Valhalla Murders. It, it's Icelandic. It was really good. One of the things also that we've done with our team, which I've really liked, is we're on Slack and every week we, I ask uh, a question of the whole team, something like, what was your first job? What's been your favorite recipe during quarantine? But the one that we asked that I got the most, the most feedback or the most comments from this week was, what have you learned about yourself in the process? Which I, I loved. I, I loved answering, but also I, I just got paragraphs and paragraphs from, from the team. And I want to know what you would say about yourself. I have learned that I can control my anxiety in a way that I... <laughs> but you know, you talked to me at the beginning of this. It was like... You know, I'm a very anxious person. And so this was like on top of everybody's worst nightmare. I felt like this really was my worst nightmare. I haven't had the time to, like right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm painting. You know, like I haven't done that in years. And it's been really nice to be able to like sit still long enough to like force a new creativity in a way. You know, like I design in such a specific way and obviously I'm not in front of my stones and not in front of my, uh, my like lovely studio and people and the way that I'm like programmed to be creative. And, and so that's like kind of opened a door to a whole different thing, which has been really nice. And then, and what medium are you using? Cause I know you've used that iPad pro sometimes when you're traveling, but are you using oil paint? Watercolors. Watercolor. Wow. I know. It's been real. I mean, you should see hilariously. We've done a whole se- well. We, I have done a whole series on the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you posted some. I have seen some. Oh, I posted one, but there is <laughs> many more. <laughs> and have you been painting jewels though too? I'm going to get into that this week. And what do you miss about designing with your team? And do you design with your team, or I don't is it- design with the team? I just uh, I miss designing with the actual stones in front of me. But it's interesting. Like when we were in London, you painted when you were in London. What's yeah? I painted. I know that was the last time I painted. Actually, it gets me more creative. Like when I painted in London, I started painting different stones that weren't in our, you know, that we hadn't had cut. So that opened it up to a whole bunch of other designs and. We came oh, back. that's cool. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Would there be a stone that you want to design with, but you're not sure how soft it is or how how you can carve it? Or It's not so much that. I think I get stuck with, you know, we have 
so many stones that we've cut over the years in our safe. So I end up like playing it huh, safe <laughs> and using everything that's in our safe. I use everything that's, you know, accessible to me. And so I think sometimes that limits the design. So if I'm just sitting here thinking like I want round balls in pink or green, that's how we ended up cutting all the gumball things is when I started drawing with that. Do you reach out to your dealers and say... So we'll send a picture and we'll do measurements off of my drawings and have them cut things. And then it's kind of a work in progress from there. Well, I have to tell you, I think that what you've, what you created will forever, but in the last two years have been your most beautiful, most creative, most prolific of all time. Thank you. I am. That's how we ended up doing the flowers because I ended up painting a flower and then we ended up enjoying like the way that one of our carvers cut the, like their interpretation of it was really beautiful. You know, so there's that too, which is really nice. It's sort of a, it's definitely not just me. When this first started, I was really never, you know, Barney's, I had a really hard year last year with Barney filing bankruptcy and then liquidating. And that was like a really you know, I, since I've started my business, I felt like we've had struggles. We had 2008. That was like a total doozy. Barney's for some reason, like really did a mind game on me because I felt like it was the very first time I really lost control for a minute and didn't know how my business was going to be and if we were going to be able to sustain it and what it was going to look like afterwards. And I'm so grateful that that happened because it really taught me how to like you know, when all of our jewelry went like up to 70% off and, you know, our others, a lot of our other partners were not comfortable investing until they knew what that looked like, you know, it sort of forced us to be really creative. So when this all happened with the pandemic, I remember I, I talked to my dad often for like business advice and I called him and I said, you know, like I, I'm going to have to lay off my entire team. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. This is so unbelievably scary to me. You know, we don't have a lot of receivables coming in. Like we really tried to tighten up our business and not take any extra bank loans or anything like that when Barney's happened. So we were just, you know, not in a wonderful position to deal with this, like right when it happened. And I laid awake, you know, he was like, it wouldn't be the worst idea if you had to do that. And, you know, life will go on. And I laid awake at night thinking about when I started my business and what my core values were and what was important to me. And it was never to have this like gargantuan business where I've lost control or lost, you know, the design control, I guess. And, And I always wanted to work with a team that I felt like really incredible working with and that we had clients who were really loyal and, and we like created that. So I was like, oh my God, I know that I don't want to lay anybody off. I know that I want as as much as I can, I want to be able to just have the most incredible, strong business and, and do whatever I can. So I just got like so, so scrappy and like, did everything I could and also stopped paying myself at the same time. And I'm like really so unbelievably like honored to say that we've kept everybody. We didn't do any salary reductions. We turned it out. We like made it happen. And I'm really proud of that. Like we're going to be fine right now until August and we'll keep going to secure it even further. So that felt really good. That was like one of the things where I was like, oh yeah, we can kind of do anything with business while the economy is completely tanking in a way that it never has. We're able to like still be relevant and still have people support us. And that part feels so incredible. Sorry, that was such a long answer to your question. It was such a great answer. And I, and I think for me that, that the word relevant has been the thing that I've thought about the most is with, with everything that we've done, like, is this relevant? with how different things are now. I mean, social media and any of the decisions we make, like, is this relevant? Does this make sense today? A hundred percent. And I've kind of always had this like funny struggle with social media in a way where I feel like I'm sort of like too old (laughs) or I don't like enjoy being connected in that way. And I'm so grateful for it because it's really allowed me to reach out and like send the right message to our clients. And like, does anybody need jewelry or clothes or no? But like being able to provide something for somebody that will like brighten their day and make them feel happy. That's like so valuable to me. 
I feel like there's real pent up desire actually for jewelry. I've never been more excited to see jewelry in my life. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> well, that's also because you haven't seen it, so it feels extra happy right now. It does, and it also feels like it's like you want to. And Mother's Day coming up feels really significant. But I almost feel like if, like you always say, it's so important to mark significant times in your life with special pieces of jewelry. Absolutely. And my God, there, there's never been a weirder, more significant time. I know. <laughs> but you know what's also like so amazing is like jewelry is one of those things that just like does not go out of fashion. You know, jewelry is just that forever thing that's passed down from generations and I think there's like never, I don't know, you like want to build a collection and have things that, you know, you have forever and ever and ever. Is there anything that you've been wearing clothing, but, but really jewelry that you've been wearing different, different than you did before or something? Yeah. The funniest thing is how many years have I been wearing that opal heart? It's so crazy to me that I took that off. Like right when this happened, I sort of was like, nah, I don't want to touch that right now. I don't know why. And now I am wearing one of those tropical flowers. I'm so into them. I have this turquoise one now that I'm really obsessed with. I had this opal one and it sold, which is great, but... I've been really drawn to turquoise. I know. Turquoise is your jam. I love it. I'm really drawn to opals. I love how they have that like magical depth and color. And so it's, for me, it's more of a personal thing. And then I get superstitious about wearing certain things. So like you know, that has been like my piece. So I wore it every single day for seven years. Like if it had fallen off or I probably would have just lost my mind. Luckily it's sitting right in my bathroom. For me, the same thing happened. Like in 2008, there was this necklace that I wore every single day, never took off. And then things were so bleak that I was like, oh my God, I'm never wearing this. I'm taking this off. <laughs> and I don't think I wore it for 10 years, you know? Wait, wait, I have a really funny one. Do you remember lovely Kazuko who was at Barney? Yes, yes. Right. She was like such an amazing, I mean, she yeah. like embodied what old day Barney is, Judy Collinson style. And, and you, and Irene, she was the first thing you saw when you walked in. Exactly. And she was there all the time in her like white lab coat. So for people who don't know, Costco was this like really prolific jewelry designer, but she made these like, she had these beautiful raw stones and probably very much believed in the power of each stone. And then she would wrap them in like gold and then it would be like on leather or a chain. Like I remember like not getting it when I was younger and then like really getting it when um, once I started really like loving, you know, and appreciating jewelry in a different way. And so I bought one. It was the first piece of jewelry I ever bought for myself. It was a rhodochrosite heart and it was wrapped in gold and it was on a brown leather cord. What color is that rhodochrosite? It's like pink with like marbled like lighter pinks in it. Nothing in the world has ever brought me worse luck than that. From the day I put it on, everything terrible happened. Everything. And then I was at the Mercer Hotel and I was like, enough of this. And I took it and I threw it out the window. And when I came home that night, back to my hotel room, they had noticed that my necklace was on the ground and put it back in my room. I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to get rid of this. What did you do? I eventually just kept it. I don't know where it is anymore. That is hilarious. Isn't that so funny? I love it. Okay. Tell me what you're anxious to do when this is over. Like, what's the no, first no way to design with stones again? And I cannot wait to have people over for dinner. Isn't that weird? Everyone's so no. excited about going to a restaurant. I can't wait to have people in my house where we like haven't even left. I hope you. I hope you make that roast chicken. I will. I've made it so many times that I would almost be fine not ever making it again. Yeah. Is there anything that you've made that you've loved more than anything? I have made delicious pizza. Really? Yes. I've made delicious pizza, but mostly I have bought the pizza dough, rolled it out, and put it in my oven. <laughs> I have been eating so much pasta and pizza. Do you all cook together? No. <laughs> I cook, but I'm taking a cooking class this Friday and Phil has um, oh, nice. has said, we'll see, that he wants to join. We've been having fun together, I have to say. Uh, me 
too. I don't, for some reason that everybody's been in a really happy mood at my house. I was really concerned and probably very similar to you. I don't, I have lived such a separate life from Phil typically, you know, I travel a lot and when I'm not, I'm doing things like writing or, you know, and so we got really programmed to a life away from one another. I think that's also like when you talked to me and I was feeling so blue, I think that was part of it was like, how are we going to live in the same house together when we haven't in so long? I know it sounds ridiculous, but like. No, it doesn't. I mean, you know me, I travel, I don't know, five months out of the year. It was scary to me just because, yeah. like, oh my God, do we love each other? Can we live with each other? Like, what does our life look like together? It just, we hadn't coexisted in a while. So the same with Perry and with me. And I think that one of my answers on the Slack question of what have you learned about yourself is that I'm a much better partner, mother, friend, um, teammate when I'm t- when I'm not tired, and I think that just the travel and all of that. I mean, I I just I've I've been tired for a long time, and I think that listening is such a a huge part of it that I that I think Perry's happy with me because I listen to everything you know he's saying, and when I'm tired, I'm like, okay, okay, get it, you know, tell. <laughs> I mean, I just. It, move through this so that I can go take a nap. I know. I think I've become a better listener actually through all of this as well, I have to say. Don't you think Zoom makes you listen better too? Oh my God. That is a new respect I have for, like Phil has done Zoom calls kind of for a long time. I find them so exhausting. Oh, really? (laughs) Oh my God. I find them beyond exhausting actually. I like them. I like them too, but I just find at the end of the day, I'm like wiped out. And it's so crazy because I'm definitely not working in the same capacity, but I find myself more exhausted than normal. But they're also like hour long meetings. So I think that's the other thing is you're, I'm not really used to having full hour long meetings all day long. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I might be excited when those days are over. <laughs> Although I am enjoying learning in a different way. And I feel much more connected to my client during this time, interestingly enough. And I feel really grateful to everyone. who Like, I just feel grateful for different things. Mm -hmm. I am beyond grateful to my team. Oh, my God. It's like really turned it out in an incredible way in the last few weeks. And just the loyalty. And it's pretty moving. Yeah. I'm I'm with you there. Mine too. Yeah. Really, really um, in awe of how much they want to make it work and make it successful and want to innovate and figure out whatever we can do to make it. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I love you. I miss I you. And, um, you. And I can't wait to see you. And I'll, I will come visit you. Promise. <laughs> yeah. In June. For, I'll, I'll come for roast chicken. Okay. <laughs> What We Wore is produced by Capital and Balto Creative Media. The original song, Someone So Enchanting, was composed and performed by Britt Drazda. is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network, powered by Ortho Carolina. Find out more at queencitypodcastnetwork.com.